I've got a question for you. So the Toronto Real Estate Board just released their numbers for May. And out of every single property that sold last month, the average sale price was just over $1.2 million. Now, earlier in the year, we were all the way up to $1.35 million. But my question to you is at the end of this calendar year, what do you think the average sale price is going to be? To put your answer in the comments below. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tom Story. I make real estate videos here in the city of Toronto, and I focus on stats and education. And if you like this type of content, if you could give this video a big thumbs up, I would really appreciate that. It does help the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed already and you're going to join our growing community, there's over 5,000 of us that come back on these videos each and every week. And I'd love to have you here. And over my years of making these YouTube videos, our team has got to work with a lot of you personally helping you buy and sell real estate. So if you watch this video and you like the vibe of what you're seeing or have any questions about the market, you can go into the first link in the description and book a buyer call, a seller call, or just a call to chat about the market. All right, two last pieces of housekeeping, okay? So we just launched the torontohousingtracker.com. So if you go to torontohousingtracker.com, you put in your email and your name, you'll automatically be linked to a Google document. Every month I update that Google document and right now it's the basic information how many properties sold, what the asset class was, and how it changed month over month. But I'm going to keep adding to it over time. So if you want access to this exclusive list, go to torontohousingtracker.com. And then the final thing before we get right into today's video is I launched a podcast. It's called The Tom Story Show. It's hosted by myself and Steve Karish over at Karish Real Properties. You can check out his YouTube channel as well. It's going to be a weekly podcast. It's video and audio. The link will be in the description. I don't need to be the one that tells you because you already know this if you're watching this video, but there's a lot of really, really scary thumbnails right now on YouTube about the market. And the real estate industry, and I am partially to blame, loves the scary headlines because they get you to the video, you click on it, you consume the content. But I'm going to try and show you in this video just a database perspective that here's where we currently are at in the market. Here's where we started the year and here's where we're going. And so far we have five months of data. And I think it would be foolish to make a conclusion of the market based on five months of data because the year over year numbers still look very strong. But the month over month, we've seen prices now drop for three months in a row. And I'm going to go over the numbers with you, share my screen. We're going to show you what's going on with the different asset classes and then my predictions where I think prices are going to go till the end of the year. Okay, so let's start with the different asset classes. So we're going to start with detached properties. Now, if you take a look from the beginning of the year, the average detached home. Now, remember when I'm going over these numbers because my team sells in the city of Toronto, these are 416 Toronto area code numbers. This is not the entire GTA. It's just the 416 area code. So it does not include Mississauga and other markets outside. So the average detached price in uh, January was just under 1.9 uh, million dollars. Today in May it is just over 1.9. So from the beginning of the year, from the sales in January to the sales in May, detached homes are up 1.5%. However, what well, we have to go back and look at February where the average sale price was over $2 million. In fact, closer to $2.1 million. We have dropped significantly from then. So we went from February to million. March, we dropped to 1.920. Then we jumped up again a little bit in April. And then now May is the lowest that we've seen since the peak of the market in February. And I would guess over the next three months, June, July, and August, you're going to see similar decreases happen in, I think detached prices by the end of the summer could get to like 1.85 on the low end, in my opinion, in the 416 area code. But we're going to have to see how this plays out. If we switch to the different asset class, semi-detached and to be honest with you, when I was looking over these numbers, the semi-detached numbers um, surprised me because we started the year with semis at 1.471, but there was only 445 sales because there's less inventory in January. The semi-detached market actually peaked out in March at an average sale price of 1.545, so almost $1.6 million or 1.55. Then we jumped under 1.5 in April, and now in May, we're at 1.426. This is the first asset class that I can say to you with certainty is actually down from January. Most asset classes are down from February or March because those were the peak of the market before the rate hikes happened. But this asset class is actually down from the beginning of the year. So we're down 3% from semi-detached properties. Now, again, I want to say this with a bit of a grain of salt to make a conclusion or assumption or even decision about the market based on five months of data would be foolish, but this is where we are at today. If we keep going down to condos, because 
the condo market to this point had not been affected at the same pace as freehold properties. And one of the main reasons is affordability. Uh, condo properties are just less expensive than freehold properties um, and location and with people coming back to work. All those factors played out, but the condo market has slowed down. We have several condo listings on the market right now and the showing action is nowhere near what it was. And we have seen prices drop now for a few months in a row. So to start the year, we had condo prices at $760,000. As of today, they are 793. Those were the May numbers. That's up about 4.2%. So if you bought in January, you're up about 4% on your condo purchase. If you go over a full year, that's on track for about an 8% increase just based on how, how the market works. Now, do I think condos are going to continue to go up? I don't. I think they're going to do the same thing that detached and semis do, but at a different rate. So I think condos are going to probably bottom out in August as well. And they could probably get down as low as maybe $750,000. And again, keep in mind, this is average sale price, not median sale price. Um, so the outliers are in there as well. If a $12 million condo sells, it's in this data. So just keep that in mind. But for condo prices, we started at 760, jumped huge in February to 822. March was the peak of the condo market at 830. That was the highest I believe condos have ever cost in the city of Toronto. April, we were at $820,000, and then we just dropped, you know, just a shade close to $30,000 into May. And obviously, the number of sales has tailed off from March as well. Now, we're going to dig even more into the data here, and, and this is kind of a cool graph to look at. So what this is showing us is just year over year. It's only showing you May, the month of May, basically since 2017. So if you look at months of inventory... The entire city of Toronto is at just over two months of inventory. As we get to fast three, we'll be in a balanced market, but it's already happening in some asset classes. Take a look at average price. 1.2. Last May, we're at 1.1. 2020, we're at 863. 2019, 838. Uh, 2018, 805. And we had 863 in 2017 because we had the peak that year before things dropped off a bit. But it just shows you, like, look how much the prices have increased in the last five years. So to have prices come down a bit here and not move at the pace that they are moving, overall for the market long term, I, I actually still think it's going to be a good thing. This is now just looking at the city of Toronto. So the city of Toronto has 2.23 months of inventory currently. We talked about the condo, seeing the condo corner there. The average condo price is 793. Now that average sale price of 1.2 million dollars, or just over 1.2 million dollars is still up 14% from at the same point last year. That's a big jump. Now, obviously, from earlier in the year, it's down. But from last year, it's huge. So I always kind of look at the numbers. And something that's interesting to me is you can tell whatever story you want to tell with the data. So if I showed you data just from February, everything would look super negative. It'd be red everywhere. If I show you data from last year, everything's going to be up 10 to 15, 20%, depending on the asset class. So it all depends when you got into the market, what your time frame is like in the market and making sure that you're not freaking out or making a short term decision, um, which is going to be a long term outlook on the market. So we'll jump back into here. A few other things I want to touch on. So your number of sales was actually down 25 percent from the same point last year and your days on market was also down. So homes were still selling faster than they were last year but there was not as many sold. There was 25% less properties sold. The final graph I wanna show you, and this is always kind of my favorite one to go over here. This is the last five years of data going over the Toronto real estate market. Now this is the GTA, it's not just the city of Toronto, it's the entire Toronto real estate board. You know, If we go back to 2018, you can see average price at 750. And you see that we, we normally have a nice little jump up and then fall down in the summer and then jump up in the fall and fall down in the winter. And we had that for a few years here. Now, 2017 isn't on this graph, but if you went back to 2017, you would have seen something very similar to this. So what I want to take a look at here, if you can see my mouse, this is the beginning of this year, January 2022. Look at that jump in price from January to February. That is a huge jump. And then right here, February, that was the peak of the market. We have now had several rate increases from then. In fact, rates are up 1.25% Bank of Canada from then. To begin February, 025 
And so we've come down every single month. And I think the question that we're all trying to figure out right now is, at what month will the price not drop from the previous month? Um, and I think with another potential rate hike in July, uh, June, I think is going to be lower than May. I think July is going to be lower than June. I have a gut feeling maybe that in the city of Toronto, and that's what I'm talking about in this video, I'm not talking about outer markets, which is a whole different conversation, but in the city of Toronto, we might bottom out in August and then things will get back to actually understanding what fair market value is once everyone kind of understands what the new rates are going to be. Let me know what you think of these numbers. Um, I will track these every single month. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to have access to these numbers, go to torontohousingtracker.com, put in your email, and you'll have access to all the information. I will update that live each and every month once I get the data. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. My name is Tom Story, and remember, home is where your story begins.